What's up guys, Ashton Bingham here again with Muse Themes. Today we have an awesome new widget to present to you, one that I personally have seen many requests for and support, our Pop-Ups Pro widget, which allows you to create and customize pop-ups for your web page. And these can be utilized in a variety of different ways, from promotions and giveaways to sales, newsletter signups, alerts, new products, it's literally endless. On the live demo here, we've included three separate examples of different ways that you can present your pop-up. This first option here is an automatic pop-up. So if I just refresh the page, you can see it slide up into view automatically. But you can also generate it with a click over on this example. By clicking Redeem Offer, we get a similar effect. And you'll also notice how you can use a variety of elements in your pop-ups, from images to contact forms, even custom close buttons. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And this one was also spiced up here with this little moving arrow, which was accomplished with our onload animator widget, in case you were wondering. And the last one here is our scrolling example, which triggers the pop-up with a scroll, as we can see here. So what I'm gonna do is jump into a new blank project file and show you how to set this thing up from scratch. Now I've already imported the widget into my library, so let's go ahead and drag it out onto the page. And the placement of this element doesn't matter, so I'm just going to keep it off canvas for now. Now let's take a quick look at the settings panel. We've got a lot of settings to go over, but first and foremost is our pop-up content graphic style. This is where you're going to type your graphic style that will be applied to your pop-up once you create one. Now it comes set default as content, so we can just leave that as is. It's also displayed on the outside of the widget here for your reference. But before we get into the rest of the settings, let's create a pop-up. So I'm gonna to go to our default Muse widget library and we'll drag out a simple state button. We can right click and select clear widget contents. And then again, to select clear all styling. That way we're left with just a regular blank state button ready to go. Now let's stretch this thing out to a better size for a pop-up. Now with the button selected, I'm going to add an image. We can go to our fill menu. We'll click add image. And we'll use that one. Perfect. And I'm going to set this to scale to fit. So it's just resting at the top of our button. Now really quick, I'm going to reference Christopher's demo project file, which you'll see matches the live demo that we just saw. He's got some really slick pop-ups and they're already built. So to save some time, I'm just gonna select a couple of the elements that he used, not the button as a whole, but just some of this text and contact form stuff. So I got all that selected. We'll hit Command C to copy. And back to our page and Command V to paste. Now keeping everything selected, I can drag it over top of our new pop-up and drop it right into the button. Perfect. So once it's dropped inside, you should have everything nicely grouped together within the state button. And since our page has a white background, I'm just going to give the rest of this button a simple color fill so that we can visually see the spacing better here. Perfect. So now we need to apply our graphic style. It's already been set as content in the widget settings panel. So what we'll do is select the state button as a whole, visit our graphic styles panel, Click this icon here to create a new style, and we'll give it a name of content. Perfect. Now, one thing I want to note here that's really important. When you drag out a state button onto your page, it will likely default to a responsive width setting, as noted here in your resizing menu. But it's very important that you change this to none. From a technical perspective in Muse, there just isn't really a way to handle the content properly across all breakpoints. And your pop-up is referred to as an actionable item, meaning it's not part of your static page. So there's really no reason that a user would need to adjust the browser width while the pop-up is displayed, unless you're, of course, deliberately testing it. So the sizes of these pop-ups are fixed and reinitialized at each browser size. But this also allows you to create custom pop-ups for different breakpoints so you can alter the layout and presentation, which will always look better anyway than trying to shrink and stack it. So before we give this a browser preview, let's check out some of our settings panel options. Transition type. There are numerous options here from fades, bounces, slides, just about anything you'd want, giving you complete control over the pop-up's entrance. And transition duration, of course, allows you to control the speed measured in seconds. 
Now these checkboxes here allow you to give the user other ways of closing the pop-up, with the escape button here and an outside click here. So I'll go ahead and click this outside one because I like that. And I'm going to come back to a few of these settings momentarily, but I do want to jump into pop-up trigger really quick. Inside here is where you control when the pop-up comes into play. So this drop-down here selects if you want it to trigger with a click or with a scroll. Or you can select this box here to just have the trigger pop up on page load automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for now. And this option allows you to add some delay to that action as well, but I'll go ahead and leave that at two seconds. So finally, let's give this a browser preview. And there we go. Our blank page loads, and about two seconds later we get our pop-up. And then of course we can click anywhere outside to close it as we saw in the panel, or you can select this default close button. You can also create custom close buttons, but we'll get to that shortly. So let's go back into Muse really quick and go over some more of these settings. Inside the panel, you may have seen this disable pop-up on mobile option. Now this does exactly what it sounds. It keeps the pop-up from popping up at smaller breakpoints. However, keep in mind that this option will only be available to you if you set your pop-up trigger to load automatically, as we've done here. If you uncheck this, you'll notice that the option gets grayed out. And in this case, if you're having your pop-up triggered with a click or a scroll, then it's just going to continue to function like normal across all breakpoints. But with this option selected, you can set a certain breakpoint for the effect to stop happening. So in this case, with it checked, at breakpoint 768 and everything lower than that, will not have your pop-up triggered. It's a neat little trick and helpful in keeping your mobile sites simplified. But I'll go ahead and leave this unchecked for now. Now this option is cool too, Visit Tracking. These settings allow you to turn off the pop-up for a set number of days after the user has triggered it. And the reason this is handy is if you visit a site really regularly, you probably don't want to get hit with a pop-up every single time you go to it. And this setting allows you to fix that. So I can enable this, and we'll leave it set to 10 days. Preview in a browser. And of course our pop-up shows. But I'll go ahead and close out of it, and we'll refresh the page. And there we go, no pop-up. So another neat little customization option. So back into the settings panel once again, a little more on our pop-up trigger settings. As I mentioned before, if you want the pop-up trigger with a click or a scroll, you need to deactivate the trigger pop-up on page load option. So if we select trigger on click, all we have to do is jump out of the panel and we'll create a simple button. So I'll drag out a state button again. We can clear all styling and all widget contents. And I'll just give it a simple color fill and we'll round the edges a little bit, but you can of course style this up to your heart's content. Now from there, with it selected, we'll visit our graphic styles panel and create a new style. And we'll name it Open. Now back in our settings panel, there is a field for our graphic style here in the pop-up trigger, which is already set default to Open, but just make sure you type the name of your style so that it matches. So now we can preview it in a browser. And of course, no pop-up on page load since we disabled that, but we can now click our button and voila. So back in the panel, let's cover that other option, the trigger on scroll option. Now with this selected, you will still need to have a custom button on your page. But in this case, it's not gonna be used as an actual button that you would click, but rather it's used as a trigger point for the scroll. You can almost think of it like an anchor. So since we already created a button, let me go ahead and show you how that works. I'm gonna move our pop-up content out of the way for now since its placement doesn't really matter. And we'll use our current button now as the trigger point. But in this case, since it's acting as an anchor, we don't really want it visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the color fill. And then let's set a trigger point. I'll move it about a few hundred pixels down the page. Now I do need to make sure my page will be able to scroll past this point. So just for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna add a basic rectangle onto the page and I'm gonna place it really far down onto the page. Just to make sure that we have enough room to scroll here. Now in the browser, as soon as our invisible custom button hits the top of the browser, our pop-up should come into play. So let's give it a preview. Nothing comes up on page load, but as soon as I start scrolling down, about 300 pixels, there we go. We see the pop-up come into play just like that. Now there's one more thing I want to cover in our panel, so let's dive in. 
And now we're going to go to the pop-up close settings. For button type, we have default or custom. Now we already saw default in action, which is just that X in the top right corner. And you can adjust the size and the color of that here if you choose to use it. Or you can set it to custom, and you can create one from scratch, just like we did for the trigger. However, keep in mind, if you're going to use a custom close button, it's best to place it inside the pop-up itself. So referring back to our original live demo, you can see that on some of these, Christopher has created them seamlessly using words, which is pretty cool. And back in the panel once more in our pop-up close settings is this option here, which is the close timer. And this allows you to set a certain amount of time before the pop-up will close itself on the page automatically, which is pretty awesome. And before I close this out, I just want to cover a few more things that many of you may be wondering. Specifically, why not just use a composition widget, right? Like with a lightbox display or something. Well, if you've ever tried to create a pop-up with a composition widget in Muse, you may already know many of the limitations. It gets you kind of part of the way there, but unfortunately, no cigar. First of all, our widget gives you different methods of triggering the pop-up, whereas a composition does not. Also, most pop-ups on big commercial sites have a small delay before the pop-up comes into play, something that a composition does not offer you. Same thing with the close timer. And our widget also has the option to disable on mobile. Google has now started cracking down on pop-ups for mobile sites, penalizing these sites. And this setting allows you to avoid that if you wish. And then lastly, and super importantly in my opinion, is the visit tracking. That's really key here. You can really start to annoy your users by having a pop-up appear every single time they visit your site or go back to the homepage of your site or whatever it is on the same machine. Our widget will remember your visit and allows you to set how many days you want to hide the pop-up if you so choose. And the very last thing I'm going to note here is some of you may be wondering why there isn't a hyperlink option in the settings panel. Well, the beauty of this widget is that it allows you to create the pop-up from scratch in your own state button. So any linking that you want to do, you simply have to apply it to elements in your pop-up and it will function all the same. So that's it, guys. Thanks for hanging in on this one. It's a simple widget in concept, but lots of things to cover and definitely rich in the number of ways you can use it. So we definitely hope you enjoy it. And as always, if you run into any issues, please don't hesitate to let us know. Have a wonderful day.